Hey guys, welcome to our tutorial introducing the Substance plugin for iClone. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn a little bit about what Substance is, uh, you know, how you can use it in iClone, and how to manipulate the different uh, outputs that uh, your Substance can create. Uh, so first of all, we're going to be using this project here. This is in your uh, projects under Substance, uh, the Substance folder. We have this happy little uh, knight sitting here, a happy little uh, horse. And uh, let's talk a little bit about exactly what a Substance is first. Um, so if you're totally unfamiliar with, with Substance, I'd recommend going to the Allegorithmic uh, YouTube site. They have a really great uh, tutorial series on what a substance is. And I've taken this diagram here from uh, that tutorial series. And you can see here, all you really need to know in this one, um, if you want this, all the other points explained here, I'd recommend checking out that uh, tutorial series. I'll provide the link in the description below. Um, but all you really need to know is that iClone takes up the animation and the host point here. And uh, you can do animation in iClone, and you can, uh, you know, iClone is the host application. And what we have here is the substance file, uh, substance output file, SBSAR file. And we import that into iClone, and you can use that uh, via the iClone or the substance plugin for iClone. All this other work is done in uh, substance. And your modeling and your sculpting can be done in uh, whatever uh, tool you use, such as uh, ZBrush or Mudbox or something like that. So the substance we're going to be using in this tutorial is actually the multi-material substance that comes embedded with iClone. And you can see we have, uh, if I bring this diagram up here, we have four different layers. We have a layer of dirt, a layer for paint, a layer for material erosion, and a base material. And you'll be familiar with those in just a moment. We also have a number of uh, 3D blocks. If I go uh, back into iClone here, we also have a number of 3D blocks. If you go into your uh, props here, and under 3D blocks, let me just move this over. You can see we have, uh, let's just undock this content manager actually. We have a folder called 3D blocks substance. And in that folder, we have all sorts of different, um, you know, capsules, bases, uh, walls, containers. So you can basically uh, apply any of these. And they have that little substance uh, symbol in the bottom left there, which indicates that they contain substance material. And you can modify any of these, just like you uh, are going to see in a moment with this uh, horse. So I'd recommend checking that out, that out. There's tons of them there. And in addition to that, in our media uh, tab here, you can go to material and there's a substance folder that contains all sorts of different substances here. You can see the list. We have all sorts of different ones. And we'll have a separate tutorial on how to apply those to your different objects. But for now, let's just uh, dock our content manager back over here. And let's concentrate on Mr. Horse here. I'm going to go over to uh, my scene manager. And I need to open up this plane here. It's kind of actually connected. Uh, the horse is a subprop of this plane. So now that we have the horse 01 selected, let's go over to our material tab over here in the modify panel. And you can see we have this uh, knight selected. And look down here under texture settings. We have our diffuse, our bump, and our specular map. Nothing seems out of the ordinary, except we now have this uh, substance symbol in the bottom right, which indicates these are uh, substance materials and they can be manipulated and modified by this substance graph. If we choose not to use a substance graph, you can see it will go back to our regular diffuse. We can actually use, use a diffuse output from our substance graph and make some modifications. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Um, down here is where we get started. If we open up the material settings, we don't really need to worry about that. We're not dealing with that at this time. We'll just close that down. We need to focus on the substance uh, section right here, which you can also get to by using the M hotkey. And if we decide to deactivate, you can see it'll just go back to its original form. And if we activate it, then we have this substance uh, texture applied. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is. We have this multimaterial.sbsar file that's loaded up. And that's the one that I just kind of described to you here. We have all sorts of different uh, channel outputs in this multi-material SBSAR. It's a very comprehensive material, very comprehensive substance. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, first of all, I'm going to mess around with the properties down here. If you look down here, we have uh, cover paint right now. So the coverage slider, if I decrease that, you can see we slowly get, uh, we slowly reveal the amount of our, the substance underneath, the material underneath, which is metal. And if I bring that slider up, it slowly gets covered in paint again. And now in order to, you know, prevent a repetitive uh, pattern for uh, for this sort of uh, coverage, we can actually change the coverage pattern. And you can see here this slider allows us to uh, swap that pattern for a different one. 
So this is very useful if you're creating like floors or walls from multiple uh, planes or multiple uh, objects. You can actually just change the coverage pattern in order to avoid, you know, the obvious repetition that will result when you do that. Let's just uh, eh, take the coverage down to about here because we're going to look at the other layers. We also have an amount of sun bleach and you can see the sun bleach right here. How that's affecting the different uh, property or the different areas of the horse. You notice that it'll, it's focused normally on the uh, top area right here because that's where the sun's coming from. You can also change the hue as well if you want. I'll change the hue of that paint. I think we'll keep it at a nice gold and the, you know, the luminosity specular, all your typical values. We can decrease the specular to make it a duller paint or increase it to make it a bit shinier. I think we'll just leave it at about uh, there. That should be fine. And let's scroll our mouse down here, and we now have paint cracks as well. So this is what I mentioned, was mentioning before. We have the ability to create some paint cracks. And you can see those cracks appear. If I zoom in on the horse a little bit, you can see those cracks appear. And if I you know, decrease the amount of cracks, you can see the result right there. We can also change the pattern of that. And the density will create you know, smaller cracks or, uh, or larger cracks. Um, so that's pretty cool. Again, like I mentioned, uh, with these parameters provided by your substance, you, uh, all of your maps will adjust at the same time. So your normal and everything like that will adjust simultaneously. So you won't have to adjust separate maps. Just use these sliders. We also have uh, edge wear as well. You can see that uh, has quite an effect on the edges of the, of the paint right there. You can spread it quite a bit. Uh, that's normally good for uh, objects that have very sharp edges like squares or rectangles or something like that. Uh, and then the base material. So we can change the base material. We don't have much paint left. Maybe we can uh, bring that coverage back up here. That's a tiny bit. Yeah, I think that should be okay right there. And let's maybe take the edge wear down as well. There we go. That had quite an effect. Uh, so the base material, the density, uh, we can change the base material first of all from uh, metal to uh, wood if we want. So we have a, a wooden interior now. And we can change that to rock as well. I think the rock one looks quite nice. We can also, let's take a look at the wood here. We can also change this density of the wood. So you can see now it gets more and more refined. Uh, and if you go here, we get a very, you know, large resolution for our wood. And we normally wouldn't want that. So like I was mentioning before, you can actually change the resolution dynamically uh, with your textures. And you can get results like this, which is really, really cool. And you can also keyframe these results as well. So keep that in mind. Everything that is uh, has a green color to the text can be uh, keyframed. We can also change the saturation of the wood. We normally wouldn't want to do that. And luminosity and specular and everything like that. And finally down here we have material erosion and dirt. Let's just take a quick look at that. Material erosion adds another layer and this is kind of like a, a layer of moss on top of the wood right there which is kind of cool. Um, if we went and changed this to uh, metal, let's go ahead and change it to metal now. The base layer to metal the erosion will be different. It'll be a rusty kind of color. So these are also connected within the substance graph that we've created using a number of different nodes. And uh, you can learn more about that in the substance tutorial series. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to change this to wood. I like the wood one. And I like the little bit of moss we can have on the wood right there. It looks like a very old wooden statue or something like that. And uh, you can change the pattern a little bit. And the density, you can just keep it you know, for something like that. It looks quite nice, I think. And then we also have the dirt, so we can add amount of dirt on it, onto it. Um, you know, that's just a um, little bit of wear and tear on the uh, on the on top of the paint there. Um, the dirt density can be higher as well, so you can have like something like that. And we just decrease the amount there. I don't want too much dirt on it. But basically, that's the embedded uh, multi-material texture uh, that comes with iClone. Like I mentioned, we have those other uh, substances as well that you can apply. Uh, but down here, let's take a look at these source maps. So these are also uh, maps that are being generated uh, as an output from our substance. We have our ambient occlusion map, our normal map, and our curvature map, which kind of defines the edges of the... This curvature map is how we define the, uh, the edge wear um, thing that I showed you before. And the world scale normal, that's how we define, um, you know, which is the top of the model and which is the bottom of the model. So that's how we were able to, uh, you know, define where to add the sun bleach. The world scale normal uh, allows you to, you know, define certain areas, uh, apply more of an effect to certain areas, like the, the top or, or something like that. That's really good for applying things like sun bleach or, uh, or dirt on the bottom of a shoe or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever you have. Um, now I'm going to quickly show you how you can create, uh, how you can customize this. 
And we're going to go up to the uh, base material right here. I'm going to actually decrease the amount of uh, um, coverage here and just go back down here to my base material. Now we currently have it as wood, but we have a couple of options here to add. I'm just going to remove this over a tiny bit. There we go. So we can have them all in a row. Uh, base material. We have the option to add a diffuse, a normal, and a specular, our own custom maps. Now you can actually go into this menu here and choose one from any of the items that we already have as part of this substance. If I wanted to choose a diffuse map, I could choose that. Uh, it's the current diffuse map, so that wouldn't really make much of a difference. But what I want to do here is add a custom map. So I'm going to actually just double click this. And I have this uh, rooftop slate map uh, or textures uh, already loaded up here. I'm going to just load the diffuse map. I've actually created these in a logarithmic bitmap to material, which is a really cool program for you know creating all sorts of maps uh, from just a single image. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, load in our diffuse map here, and you can see that loads in the bottom there. And I'm going to actually load the normal map as well. And we can't really see much right now, but I'm going to load the specular as well, and that adds a little bit of shine. Now what I need to do is kind of maybe take off that material erosion a little bit. And there we go. Now we can see those scales. And you can see they're fairly large. So maybe I want to make them a little bit smaller so I can just increase the density of my base material. So right here you can see I can do a really cool job at making that look like a, a scaled metal horse. And I can you know increase or decrease the amount of specular there to make it look more stony or, 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 or more metallic right there, which is really cool. And I can you know increase the density all the way up to make it look uh, you know very small. And I really like that uh, that look. You can see the uh, the reflection of the light off those uh, scales right there. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to take the density back down here. And I'm going to go and load up another map. Let's go to my textures. I have another one here called Floor. This one's normally for use with floors, but it actually looks kind of nice on this uh, night here as well. So I'm going to load up the diffuse map. And you can see right now we currently have the diffuse map mixing with the normal map and the specular map from the previous texture. So if you take a close look, you can see back here especially we can see those those bricks, but up here the normal scales are very apparent because of the light. So let's go ahead and load in the normal map for our other material. And now you can see it's starting to take shape. And the specular map as well. There we go. So now we have a nice looking um, horse that looks like it's made out of cement tiles. And we can increase the density on this one as well. Uh, something like that. Maybe that looks a little bit nicer. And you can decrease or increase that amount of specularity. You can see the effect that that has. It's uh, quite a significant effect on the appearance of our model. And we can rotate it around like that. And that's basically how you can create your uh, your own custom texture within the uh, substance parameters. And if you go up to uh, you know your cover paint, you can totally load a different texture in your cover paint as well. If, for example, I wanted to, you know, change the diffuse for my cover paint, let's maybe add a little bit more coverage right there. And I wanted to change the diffuse for my cover paint. Let's find a nice looking texture here in my small little texture collection. Uh, maybe something like uh, this this nice little tile uh, pattern right here. If I wanted to select that, you can see we get that nice looking um, paint pattern right there. I don't know if you'd re really want that. Uh, you can add more coverage, and you can have the the entire thing covered by your cool little pattern right there and you can you know change the the coverage pattern there as well maybe add some sun bleach to that make it make it look a little bit more uh, realistic there we go so you can also modify other channels as well and you know we get that really cool looking result right there um, you decrease the coverage there and all kinds of cool things you can put a graffiti pattern on there or anything you want so that's basically it that's how you can customize your own uh, materials uh, with substance uh, within the substance plugin. And again, the ability to use uh, substances within iClone is a huge uh, step for uh, creating materials that look realistic and really nice. And we'll have much more uh, on this uh, in, in future tutorials as well. So uh, this is me signing off, guys, and uh, thanks for watching.